Alright guys, hello, some more content for you. Following on from the free head tracking with a webcam video I did not too long ago, I had a few people hunt me down on Discord and so that's really helped them out, but they're having trouble dialing in the settings. So we'll link the original video in the description in the pinned comment below. That will help you get open track and AI track. The point was to make you aware of this option and to give you some generic baseline settings for you to then tweak yourself. I said I could have done it better and that's what we're going to do in this video. We're going to refine our settings. So let's put DCS on active pause and we'll bring up AI track. So once again you can see me there's enough light in the room. Uh, ignore the mess in the room because I'm decorating. Uh, the software doesn't care about that. It just cares what's in this blue box. And it's made out my facial features. See my eyebrows moving? So that's good. We're going to stop the tracking and do the configuration. So I explained in the first one about finding your camera. I'm camera one with 640 by 480 resolution going up to 1080p isn't necessarily going to help. In fact, it could make things worse. Uh, so we've got frames per second at 30. Uh, the distance under tracker parameters, I've got it 0 0.5. I found if you go too low, it doesn't really help, but everyone's going to be different where you're sat from your monitor or your webcam. You will need to experiment a little bit. Don't think you can just completely copy my settings. The point is to watch what I'm doing uh, to help you get a better understanding of what you should be doing. So we've got camera field of view which is now at 45. So originally we have model type at fast and I found there was a little bit of jank. It was very jittery when I was looking up and down on the pitch access. So I was trying to save CPU resources but we could do medium or we can set it to heavy and we can apply those settings and we can start tracking again. So it's all good. We can now go into open track that started we can see the octopus is moving with our head so I explained about profiles you will have like a generic default any and then you can create other profiles and the reason you want to do that let's say DCS world I have to invert the pitch looking up and down but elite dangerous I don't actually need to invert it so it's better to have separate profiles for different games get different sensitivities different options set so we're heading to options and I've got my filter so uh, rotational filter we've got the your pitch and roll smoothing's at 1.8 uh, dead zone 0 0.06 positional filter in XYZ smoothing's one mic mic dead zone 0 0.1 one mic I haven't changed that uh, you can change these sliders and see the effect that it has uh, in real time if you keep your uh, sim in the background it's a borderless window I'm not going to change that. What I'm going to do is head into mapping and change things in here. So we've got the yaw, which is moving my head left and right. Now, I think what might have confused some people, as I said, clicking a couple of points, I actually have three. So the end of my dead zone is at 10. So the dead zone just means I've got a little bit of play, a little bit of head movement before it finally picks it up. So that starts at 10. And then we've got another one at 60 by 180. So 60 degrees of head movement will translate to 180 movement within the sim and then I've got another point at the end which is 180 uh, by 180 so if I remove that 180 by 180 you'll actually see that it isn't really a curve it will just go to like a more of a straight line so I wanted it to have a bit of a curve which is why those extra points are added in at the end so maybe I've just got a little bit too much play left to right so we can go down 8.5 it's a little bit better. Maybe we can go down to eight. Try and just make it a little bit more sensitive. 7.5 maybe. But it, it will also adjust that, that curve. So you just have to be careful. So we'll leave it at that for now. And we'll head over to the pitch. So this is a max input. 90 degrees max output 90 degrees so I'm actually going to change this to 45 so our dead zone ended at 5 that's going to be way too much now so let's turn that let's halve that at least so I can still have a little bit of a nod on and it's not picking that up so let's let's go down maybe we can do one and a half yeah it's not too bad um, let's put our final point in. So we've got 30 for 90. So 
So I'm losing a little bit of the head movement. That doesn't seem too bad. So let's go roll X and Y we don't use. They're disabled and Z is for the zoom. So we've got point dead zone at one and we, we end right at the top. So we'll just click OK and we'll head into into DCS. Let's bring the the webcam back up so you can see. So I look at the edge of my monitor and that is actually 180 behind me. So I've got to move my eyes back, look at the screen. I've got a 32 inch monitor, that's not too bad. So you've got to tweak things around what suits the size of your monitor. Maybe you've got an ultra wide, maybe you don't. I don't know. We just have to tweak things around, see what works for you. Let's look up, check the mirrors, look right up. Very rarely you're going to look that high up. Look down between my legs. Let's have a look at the left console. Let's have a look at the right console. Lean forward. Looking at the MFDs if I want to click on these or the upfront controller. Click to the right a little bit to focus on them. It's not too bad. So let's go back. So our your. So we're at 60. Let's try. 55 okay so that's so that's snapping pretty quick so i actually think i prefer i prefer it at 60. i mean we could probably split the difference but let's do 58 50. So not too bad. So as I've said, I like to fly in VR and that's one-to-one -one head movement and that really does help you. So I'm in the F-18, let's just give you a, an example. There's a SAM launch, surface-to-air missile. Uh, so we're near that airfield. I'd see a plume of smoke. What I want to do with this crosshair on the helmet queuing system is mark that smoke, the base of it, because I know that there's uh, a missile launcher there. So I can save that point, get away, uh, come back again to give them a bad day. Get away from their missile. They've given away their position. I'll just come back and, and blow them up. But I need to be able to do that quickly. Uh, when you do the head tracking, even if you buy track IR, uh, because of the dead zones or whatever, I mean, you might be able to get it a bit more accurate. But yeah, I'll be able to get it in the ballpark, have a rough idea where they were, and then sort of come back later and use the uh, targeting pod or the, the seekers on the Maverick missiles to, to find that, that SAM site. So you don't need to be like pinpoint accurate necessarily, um, but it does help you if, if you can do it first time round, which is where VR helps. But where VR doesn't help you is that if you want to look behind you, you have to do that. And your neck doesn't thank you for that when you do dogfight. So a lot of people do prefer head tracking. They can have higher quality settings uh, for the graphics on their monitor. And uh, yeah, yeah, don't blame them. So even if you are into doing it in VR, you can at least learn your aircraft reasonably well with the monitor. But yeah, it doesn't have to be DCS. You can do Elite Dangerous. You can do driving games like Project Cars 2. Pretty sure that supports head tracking as well. So um, yeah, if it's free, why not give it a go? So we'll leave it there, guys. Have a great day. Have a great evening, whatever you choose to do after watching this. And as always, I'll see you when I see you next. Ciao for now.